everyone, welcome back to TFS Fan Mail Friday! Woo! Yeah! Woo! I was in Japan! This episode of Team Four Stars Fan Mail Friday is brought to you by Loot Anime. Go to lootcrate.com and use the promo code Team Four Star to get 10% off your subscription. And back to the studio! Wow! Alright, first thing I gotta show off here, like this came in in a massive box. And this is from a uh, Twitter user, at Dogsplained. Uh, we got a pancake bot, which will make custom designs for you. As you can see, we made our lovely logo here. As and you can obviously plainly you can, see. Look, you can, look you, can see, you can see the stars, and if you follow us on Twitter, you probably noticed that we were periscoping each time we tried to make this pancake. Second attempt, much better than the first. But you can check out both on our Periscope, which we set up, which is... On Twitter, at Team Four Star. At Team Four Star on Twitter. <laughs> okay, I didn't know Periscope was something no, different. No, it just goes not. through Twitter. Right that there. works. All right, I'm, I'm tech literate. So, uh, what, what do we got over here, Mr. Mr. Stark? My goodness. Not only do we have Mr. The, the, Stark. The answer to the body pillow question, the mystery from episode one. <laughs> yes. And we finally... And, and, and the best part about it and is... Who's this from? Kiridin. 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 Is that an H or an A? I'm sorry. Kiridin. 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 Kiridin sounds like somebody who would like who would com accompany me through the woods on a quest to like throw I thought a it ring. Sounds like a Stark kind of character. You're thinking of Kerrigan. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so we got Mr. Stark, but <gasps> oh, oh, back to back. That's my boy. Yeah. He's yeah. I also love the fact that he's got the Bucky. Uh, the I, Bucky Bear? I, I, yeah, Bucky Bear. Bucky I can't bear. imagine his shield would be that comfortable of a pillow. I, you know, it's I, also embroidered. If you look at it, like the shield is embroidered. Yeah, I, I think, I think <laughs> that is actually a pillow. I think like, he's you got think a that's shield. supposed to be a shield pillow? Yeah, he's got a shield pillow. Now, Kira, you got some kick-ass armor on that we got. I do have some kick-ass armor. You can see my lovely. Hyperbolic. Exhibit A! Yeah, Exhibit A. Let's test it right now. Yeah, yeah let's, let's just, just smack it this thing. Let's just stab you as hard as I can. I'm it's ready, ready not, not going to work. It's Saiyan Armor. It's this from, is... uh, from the Insane Armory. That's right. From Insane Armory. This is the hyperbolic time chamber Peace. armor that they wear. It looks it looks sick as hell. It looks amazing. By the, I by love the, this so much. By the way, I don't like the implication that that armor cannot be stabbed. Uh, I'm pretty sure Krillin would have a word or two. <laughs> yeah, but that was Frieza. Come on, man. I'm not Frieza. Or am I? And, and Yadrobe, <laughs> Yadrobe was able to cut through Vegeta's arm. Uh, no, the, he wasn't. He was, was able to cut out. his tail. No, he, no, he cut, remember, he cuts Vegeta in the back. It's what causes oh, him yeah, to beat the right. living shit that out of him. Oh, that's head. right. Okay. Cool. However, this is the hyperbolic time chamber it's version, same. right? <laughs> not the original version. No, this is a much it's higher... Upgrading, yeah. man. What does it stuff. protect you from? Say an armor does <laughs> suck. <laughs> Just a little bit? Where is the That's why Vegeta ditches it for a unitard. <laughs> She's like, screw it, this isn't helping. Me down. My muscles are strong. You know, it, it never even occurred to me that in the Blue Saga, he does that because he technically can't wear armor. Yeah. yeah. Ah. We are wielding also uh, detective kits that we are given for our investigation through the game Contradiction on our playthrough on TFS Gaming. Uh, That's right. These were provided by Emma, who was a <laughs> suspect in the game, so I find that very interesting. He's trying yeah. to bribe you. Uh, <laughs> trying to bribe the cops. Being like, hey, you no, know, here's, a, here's a nice lovely pipe and hat for you. Was she found guilty? Check out the playthrough to find out. Dear TFS, hello. I typed this letter because my handwriting is subpar. Fair enough. I have been a longtime fan of the content that you guys have put out over the years. I first discovered you shortly after you finished season one of DBCA, and I watch all of your content on both channels. You always bring a smile to my face when I watch. Many a time, you have got me to laugh so hard I had to stop the show and clean my face off. Ooh. <laughs> That's <laughs> what? Don't worry. I've had that same problem with other types of videos. Drainage. It's and all over. <laughs> and then start the show back up to keep watching. But Vegeta, I didn't know you were that stupid. Nine minutes, 18 seconds. Mm. Nine minutes, 18 seconds. Absolutely. You always make the uh, bad times better and the good times great. Aww. And I try to share your work with all that I can. In the package are a few little trinkets I think you guys should have for just a small part of the laughter and fun that you've given me over the years. Some Pokemon cards that you may recognize. Oh wow, these are like, it's everybody from our team. Like yeah. everything oh, that we caught. caught. That's awesome. The whole box. Also, All friends and trash. Also, also. <laughs> Four yes. Leaf Clover. Ooh. Ooh. We're uh, lucky today. Dragon Ball Z cards that he forgot he had. Thank you for who, your who, leftover. Who remembers? Oh, cool. Ooh, the Ooh. Gilded Dende. You, the Gilded Little <laughs> the Green. The Gilded Dende. The Gilded Green. <laughs> the Golden Green. 
a, a Dragon Ball Z tech deck. Oh Bigger Border God. Man, bringing it back to the 90s right now. Bam. Um, Accepting any and all tech decks, by the way. Wink. A, a belt oh, for Kaiser. Oh, by the Pandora's way, he spelled my box. name. He spelled my name with just K I S E R. I'm so good at grinding, guys. Keyser. <laughs> why did anybody ex like make any other move? Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> um, this this belt is for me. Uh, I I don't know why this belt's for me. I don't understand it. What's the implication? But, um, and here's the thing, <laughs> the one and only trunk sword. However, slightly modified. No, this is this is the best trunk sword we've gotten, by the way. No offense to anybody else who has sent us trunk swords, but this one comes with a actual swords. like an actual like Hefty. wooden freaking uh, sheath. sheath and, and scabbard. Oh, gotta open it this way because yeah, yeah buddy. That and it Logo. actually has good balance. Yeah, yeah. it is terrifically balanced. Eh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do that. It's sharp and that's made of mostly foam. <laughs> it's, got, it's got all seven Dragon Balls and our logo. Yeah, no, our logo's sitting there at the bottom. So this has been like just kind of sitting around my office for a bit. <laughs> just like, yeah, no, I like it. Here, sheathe me. Uh, 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 Please be gentle on all of And <laughs> <laughs> Wow. To the to the hilt. To the hilt. <laughs> So thank you very much, um, Chet, Chet Wallace. Wallace. So, uh, uh, some questions real quick. Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. One, I like Lanny, questions. Lanny. Yes. Have you ever dove into the EU for Star Wars? Yes. <laughs> and if so, who's your favorite character? That Species is... Species and story. Let's see. I think my favorite character from the Star Wars EU is probably, and it's no longer canon, but the story of Darth Bane. Uh, he had a great trilogy of books, and I actually highly recommend it if you enjoy Star Wars, like the universe of Star Wars, and you enjoy the lore of the Sith, then I'd recommend checking out Darth Bane. Darth Plagueis also very good, though. Mm -hmm. um, for all of us, what is cooler, giant robots or spaceships? Spaceships. Uh, what about spaceships that turn into giant robots? Best. There you go. Yeah, yeah. SDF-1, best yeah. thing ever. All right, and uh, three. Grant, by the way. Yeah? What do you like better? Pokemon or Digimon? The correct answer is Digimon. So, oh, it's Pokemon, I'm sorry. <laughs> is that a real question for him? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I have not seen a single, th like I'm not gonna say Digimon's bad because I have not paid any attention to it because Pokemon filled my every need in the monster <laughs> category. <laughs> no, just every need ever. Filled every need. Every, every desire, single, every, every desire every... I ever had, I found a way through Pokemon. Look, I found food, okay? <laughs> so I, they... I have shelter. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chet Wallace, for these wonderful gifts. Yes. That is the coolest trunk sword. It is. And, like, God, just the, even the wrapping around the, like... Yeah, it's like some faux leather. It's, it's really nice. It's, yeah. it's, I feel like it feels like real leather. But. Might be. So, right here we have, um... We have this oh, really that's nice a, piece of fan art That's here. some fun fan art there. <laughs> that's a pretty cool Vegito fan art sent to us from Van Tarver. Uh, let's see. I know he sent this in. I don't know if he drew it. Um, Toriyama. Uh, do we know anybody? I think, I think it's Toriyama. Toriyama. Do we do know we... anybody by that name? Because sure that's that... who drew it. I'm pretty sure that's Bird Mountain in Japan. Toriyama. Weird. Now, Bird, Bird Mountain. Mountain. Thank you, Mountain. thank you, Mr. Bird, Bird Mountain. Yes, thank for... you. For... <laughs> thank you for the fan art. Thanks for the lovely Vegito fan art. You just really <laughs> anticipated for the boo art. Thank you. Kira <laughs> <laughs> Toriyama. <laughs> So holy crap, this is actually a Toriyama uh, sketch. It's actually done in the sharp. This is the original print, and he did it for a 2005 magazine when he was- Shueisha, right? Yeah, this yeah. is for a uh, Shueisha magazine um, back in 2005 in March. And this is when he was pretty much the most detached from Dragon yeah, Ball no, yes, ever. Yeah, ever. Which, and, and, and this is just a sketch from memory. Yeah. I'm surprised it looks like it does. Yeah, I know, because this is when he just- was kind of dropping everything. Dragon Ball Evolution was about to come out. Yeah, this there. is this this is directly from Johnny Dragon Ball. <laughs> straight to us, yeah. Johnny Dragon Ball himself. So thank you so much, Van Tarver, for getting this. I don't know how you did it, but that's pretty awesome. It's yeah, pretty fucking sweet. Uh, this came with a letter that Kaiser seems to have moved. Oh, well, it was guess. yeah, it was rolled up on the table there, and yeah, some got brushed off. This one, the one that's rolled up right in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you move it? <laughs> so this is probably one of the coolest pieces of art that we've gotten. We actually had to yes. go out and buy a frame for it. It's our TFS gaming OCs and non-OCs as uh, <laughs> the Avengers. This is going in the goddamn gaming room. Oh, oh yeah, yes it is. Okay, dear Team Four Star. Hello, hello. 
I have been a fan of DBZA since 2011, my first episode being The Arrival of the Ginyu Force. Since then, I consider your work to be what all our shows should aspire to be. From the attention to detail in the editing and sound design, to the top-notch quality of the acting, to the balance between humor and storytelling found in the writing, your talents are undeniable and always present in everything you release. Aww. Aww. Not only was your show a good source of laughs during a particularly tricky portion of my life, you were also instrumental in helping me meet one of my best friends. We attended college together, and though I can't remember the exact context, at one point I said, God damn it, Nappa! And he immediately responded with, Holy shit, you watched Team Four Star 2! And we have been friends ever since. I'm trying to keep from fanboying too much in this letter, but I'd like to give some special shoutouts uh, to some of the team members. First, Ganjing Ba. As TN? Uh, is my favorite character in DBZA, not to mention that line, FUCK POWER LEVELS, FUCK SUPER SAIYANS, AND FUCK YOU, is probably my favorite quote in the series. It, it's definitely it's up there. Uh, we, we were looking forward to doing that scene forever. Uh, second, a shout out to HBI2K. Definitely a good man to Ooh. shout out to. As Nail is my second favorite character, and I always love hearing that new snark he has to pester Piccolo with. Third to Kaiser, blech, <laughs> because your work ethic and dedication to your craft and the humbleness and patience that you display is a huge inspiration. You are a champ and can play League all you want. No, he can't. He is no, legally yeah, barred. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> I'll Overwatch, on the other hand. Yeah, Overwatch, no. I could go on, but it would make the uh, it would take pages to write all the praise that each member of the team deserves. So I shall limit myself to saying thank you for everything that you have done and wish you all the best. Sincerely, Rory Fiddler at Son of Dave. Well, thank you so much, Rory Fiddler, Son, Son of, of Dave. Dave. This is amazing. It's pretty, I absolutely love that. Fantastic. We're going to hang that up. Behind the couch. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Someone had sent a box of cool GameStop pre-order like bonuses that were like. Exclusive. So it's probably somebody uh, yeah. that like so, Michael Leoti. Probably somebody that like worked at a GameStop and just had yeah. all these extra things. There's a things. bunch of cool stuff in here. Some of it is older stuff. Yeah. Here. yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. Not particularly this, pertaining geez. to me, but some of it is stuff that I love. Like I'm a oh, kind of big dude. Fire Emblem wow. fan, so it's got like some cool Fire Emblem stuff in here. The, the Chrono Trigger orchestral, the orchestral soundtrack. orchestral soundtrack for Chrono Trigger. That's awesome. Extra we got soundtrack. an Assassin Man. Extra one. I think that's Ezio. I want to oh, say. I see. It, it has two songs. It has the Chrono Trigger oh, okay. orchestra version and the medley orchestra version. All right, then we got Johnny Assassin. Yeah, Mr. Assassin Man. Good. Art of Dead Space. Uh, Ooh. That's kind of cool. Some Dishonor. Ooh, it has 3D uh, yeah. glasses. I love, Ooh. I like this one a lot. This is a UMD case, if anybody remembers. Oh my God. PSP. PSP. When Stuff. Crisis Core came out, it has the Shinra logo on it and it looks Absolutely awesome. Alex this is a lot cool. of really cool stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I know. Kind of like a graphic novel thing for Common oh. Grounds. No. You have a com oh, Common weird. Grounds, huh? Oh, Dishonored. Yeah, Dishonored card pack thing. Uh, like, Colin dibs on these guys. I really want the knuckles stylus. <laughs> Colin dibs on. Wait, that. wait, wait. Let me see that real quick. <laughs> That was for the DS RPG. Oh what's, yeah, what's the black he's, the, one? Yeah, he's from Dark Brotherhood. The the RPG. I can't see the. Okay. The one that wasn't supposed to be a Sonic is, RPG. Oh, oh okay. okay. Sonic RPG. What's that? What's that one? I can't find a title. No, that's the uh, album. Like Mass number? Effect. Oh, it's yeah. Square Enix. It's not Mass Effect. I just saw the. Oh, oh it's Heavensward. It's Heavensward. Ah, oh, oh God, it's Heavensward. Yeah. Oh, Dude. So cool. Oh yeah, you got it right. Dude, I almost saw the movie while I was in Japan. Um, that was that close. A Final Fantasy fourteen movie? No, 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 no. The fifteen movie. That's uh, oh, oh, that, oh, there's a fifteen movie. Yeah. Enjoy these various items from a fan. Most are old, hard to find GameStop pre-order bonuses. Feel free to keep what you want. The comic is an amazing trade paperback that I really want you guys to see. Enjoy the games, items, etc. Awesome. From Michael Leoti. Yeah, no, thank you, Michael Leoti. Super cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh man, oh, look at that! Look at that! Akira Toriyama art in I know, 3D. Right? Isn't that cool? Mm. It, it honestly, the game's okay. If you like, <laughs> if you like Dynasty Warrior. By the way, I love I, at the arcades, there's there were like two Dragon Quest games at the arcades, and they are super yeah. popular. Yeah, Dragon awesome. Quest is huge everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, Kieran, what you got in whatever you want to show off? <laughs> we got that box. Yeah, this one right here, I wanted to show full off. Full of lots of old, awesome yeah, games. Yeah, because this one uh, specifically pertains to something that I have been looking for for a long time, and just someone kind of sent it in. Hi Team Four Star, I want to say thank you again for all of your hard work throughout the years. I've been a fan since 2010 and everything you have done has gotten better and better. Here are some of my old PS1 games, hope you enjoy them. I did try to contact you on Twitter but unfortunately didn't get a response so apologize if you already have any of these. I do want to thank Grant however for his help with the hardware and software info he gave me in regard to the Nuzlocke. 
I have a shiny Fero for him, and I would like if he would like it, and I can make some ah, for boy. everyone else if you guys want. Let me know on Twitter if you do. Sincerely, Mark Browning at Fozzy Wolf. I'd be down for a shiny. All right, Fero. so what do we got in here? <laughs> so here, oh shit, backyard soccer. Woo! Yeah. Woo! A classic. <laughs> no way. Hold on. I yeah, there's some pretty crazy stuff. Oh, wow. Warcraft two on the PlayStation. On the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The Dark Saga. <laughs> God, yeah. I played this when I was a kid on the PlayStation. And I think he's got some of the Crash games in there. Yes. Too. Yeah, Crash oh, Bandic, Crash Warped, and uh, Crash Two: Cortex Strikes Back. Okay, oh, so good. Those those are the best ones. Yeah, those uh, ones are the best. I guess. And then we have here Star Ocean: The Second Story. That is a that is one that's hard to come by. Holy and then shit! The original collector's edition of Lunar Silver Star Story. Wow! Holy shit! The, Wait, hold on, hold on. No, my husband just popped the boner. <laughs> <laughs> this, that game. Like, this is the one that comes with the hardcover manual. That is everything. hard to find. Yeah, what the this is incredibly rare and super high quality, but the hardest thing to find in here is not a PlayStation game. This goes for an absurd amount online, and I've played this game when I was a kid. So, uh, Mr. Mark, Mark Browning, Browning, if you ever want this back, just contact us. No. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. This is so hard to find, and I played this all the time as a kid. You have to drop a pretty penny to find this nowadays, even just loose cartridge, so are, holy crap. Are we talking under 100? No. No. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the probably the most rare uh, Game Boy, regular Game Boy game, and I collect Game Boy games, so absolutely love it. Thank you so much, man. It's it's one of the it's one of the rarer ones that you know was mass produced at one point. Yeah. Yeah, but now it, everyone that has it just holds on to it. So definitely look forward to that on like a casual Friday or something. All right. All right. Now you so, got something in your hand there. So this is play first. We we don't know the contents of this. Play first. Yeah, so here. This, All right. This could be This anything. could be a murder. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do it. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just going to do it because I was next to the microphone. Yeah, okay. It needed to be turned on first. I know. All right. Here we go. We're going to play it. Hello and welcome to TFS Plays, the strange recording device found in the package <laughs> they just opened. I like the theatricality. I realize this is an unusual medium with which to convey what is essentially an elaborate letter. But there are times when text simply does not suffice when it comes to proper conveyance of one's message. Fair enough. Anyone who's ever made an awkward comment on YouTube and had someone completely misconstrue it will know what I'm talking about. With that out of the way, I'd like to start by telling you not only how enjoyable your work is, but generally impressive. You produce some of the highest quality content to be found on YouTube, even in excess of the quality of the original from which you take inspiration. And like the characters you so love, you push your own limits to overcome new challenges each and every time you produce something. And even when you cannot produce that quality with the desired frequency, you entertain us with your gaming content with which you are constantly innovating and improving. You simply do not stop trying to entertain us or create things to entertain us and stubbornly strive to make it better and better despite the obstacles and in some cases, in spite of them. You know how to express your creativity, and to that end, I invite you all to unleash the beast with some bloody roar. What? The original PlayStation. I played this game. Not oh shit! <laughs> Quite a bit as a much younger man, and it's probably my favorite fighting game of all time. Well, okay, all right, all right. One of my favorites. Fair enough. Please don't look at me like that. I, 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 I can't look at you. <laughs> Soul Calibur or whatever, you know? Um, at any rate, I'm a creative type myself, and I, I know that Gnarl Clearly, you sent this. <laughs> sits in the pit of your stomach and echoes to your mind without mercy whenever you are not creating something in some way. I am impressed with how you've all managed to find that outlet for yourselves and funneled it collectively into something so successful and enjoyable for yourselves in the process. I've yet to find just the right medium for my own creativity, and it frustrates me every day that I do not find it, do it, create it, and enjoy setting aside time for it. The most success I've had is with a novel I've attempted, but in nearly two years I've written 12 chapters that all desperately that need to happen. be rewritten. Yep. Yep. And, um, no, alright, I still kind of feel like you're judging me for my earlier comment about the bloody roar. Look, look, just I a think, little. I've played fighting games, plenty of fighting games. You got your Mortal Kombat's and your Street Fighters and 
the guys, whatever. Alright, fine, goddammit, here. Just for that, you take binary domain. And all you've gotten PS3 third person. Flip it around so they can, what are you doing with me? <laughs> action and ridiculous, insane plot and cutscenes. Add in a dash of gung-ho protagonist riddled with mythology towards robots and a pinch of colorful NPCs, and you've got that perfect recipe that makes for an excellent TFS blaze. Would you watch that? Oh, I'd watch that. I don't know. Would you watch it? Tell us in the comments below. What you do? I wish I could be more like you. Please play my games, and I generally look forward to seeing where you go from here. I only see it getting better. Your fan, Joshua Graves. Oh, well, thank you, Joshua. Thanks, Josh. Okay, now that that's over... Holy shit, play your arm! Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll that definitely make its way onto at least one casual Friday, I'm I don't, certain. I don't think you quite understand how much I love Bloody Roar, and don't make the obvious fucking joke, because this <laughs> game's really fun. No, that game... No, I, I, I loved Bloody... Uh, uh, what, which one was on the PS2? Bloody Roar... Three. Two, three, three. 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 I, I enjoyed Bloody, that one a lot. Bloody Roar 3 is the uh, probably the ble best Bloody Roar. I'd say so. But, uh, Bloody Roar 2 is better than Bloody Roar 1. But Bloody Roar 1 is... It's, it's hard to come by. It's so... Oh my god. <laughs> also, I've never played Binary Domain. I don't know what, I don't know what that's I about. never did either. Yeah, thanks so much, Josh. Uh... <laughs> Good luck on your novel and everything. I know it's, it's it can be very hard being a creative type person, like just trying to find an outlet and just find finding a way to both uh, make sure that your creative your creative side is fulfilled while also being able to survive. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be very tough, and trust me, we know. Uh, Best of luck with everything you're doing, and thank you so much for uh, Bloody Roar and Binary Domain. And the very unique <laughs> method which which you have sent a letter. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I, we get some unique manners of communication. Yeah. It takes all kinds. We also have this poster over here from... It, it could be... Uh, the artist is Jared Henry. But uh, it was sent to Devin Lazar, so I'm assuming it's Devin that sent I it to us. I think that's who sent it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's who I'm assuming who sent it Feel to free us. To correct but us if, Jer if Jared, if you did send this to us and you were the one that made it, thank you. It's it's friggin' awesome. I've seen this art at conventions. It's really stinking cool. Yeah, yeah no. The stock it's printed on is super, yeah, it's like very rough. The, and the fact really the fact that it's like made, it's like it's printed on like repurposed wood pulp. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it feels I, like. I like how it doesn't look like the uh, dragon came from the balls. It's as if he had to gather the balls and then, and the, then dragon the dragon was like, hey, you got those? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, the dragon like appeared to him because yeah. they were there. He summoned the dragon via bringing the balls <laughs> to a place. And, and then, then the dragon's just like, like hey, that. What's up? Your, the conditions have been fulfilled. What yeah. can I do for you? All right. Yeah. Uh, do you have them balls? I'll take them for you for a wish. <laughs> so when I am done with my detective uh, work, good old S. Boudicker has decided... When you get when you go on your casual yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. casual days, uh, when I just want to go outside and have some fun with some Pokemon Go, I can let everyone know what my <laughs> other profession is. Oh, shit. <laughs> be ready to be the pro that I am when it comes to the Pokemons. Or... I can be a villain and have to- <laughs> Oh man, you're a bad guy when it's flip durst mode. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So thank you S. Boudicker for uh, you know letting me be able to just exude what I already know about myself and that is that I am the Pokemon Master slash Team Rocket uh, grunt. Uh, by the way, I like how that's durst mode. Yeah. <laughs> no, durst mode is backwards. Yep. As in like pointless hat. So we got this piece with a letter that you summarized. Yes, uh, uh, so it says, hi maggots, so I wonder what it could Oh, it's Mr. Popo. Uh, so this was sent uh, by David Dressler, uh, and he had sent us a a note that detailed like he had a really cool like headcanon story for all of our characters. It was multiple pages. I'd love to tell you all about it, but man, it was it's a little too, a little a little too much time to read on yeah. air. But you, but it was uh, a very cool thing. And he also wanted to know if we had considered uh, ever joining Screw Attack in their Amiibo fight. Thing that they had going oh, on. And oh, like, I, I know, I, I know they have like a tournament at SGC where they like they have like a death battle for amiibos where they like pit amiibo against amiibo and the loser gets like destroyed, destroyed in some, in some way, shape, and he or was form. asking what amiibo we would enter if we were to enter one. Oh man, we have our butt dork one. We have butt yeah. dork. We, we have a bunch of. I have a bunch of amiibos, none of which I'd really want destroyed because I, I they're more of like a collector's piece <laughs> to me because I, I don't own a Wii U. <laughs> yeah. I would never put in butt dork. Butt dork is far, far too valuable. He's too powerful. He has no eyes, man. He's killed so many before. Why would <laughs> he doesn't want to anymore? <laughs> oh, but on the back here we also have uh, the rules of Popo's training. 
For example, one and two are do not talk about Popo's training. And one thing you'll need to know about Popo's training is a lot of the rules are on a need to know basis. If you break them, you'll know. <laughs> And then, of course, it goes all the way down to six, which is don't break Popo's stuff, and seven is also redacted. Most of these are redacted. If you if you learn what they are, it's too late. <laughs> this was sent from Rebel Base Comics and Toys. Ooh. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. I like yeah. the name. Yeah, Rebel Base Comics and Toys. I like the name. Um, and it is my OTP. <laughs> Gorin and Yajirobi. Karobi. Karobi. Yajirobin. Yeah, he's... Fat guy with cat. When did that one come out? I, that's, you know, that is old. This yeah, is that's... this is one of the ones I think that looks like mid nineties. I'm pretty sure this was the no. same line. Was that a Jack's no. one? This was the same line of toys that had the weapons with them. Yeah, so it's... you got trunks with a rocket launcher for some reason. No, that one you get. Like... Oh, you mean like your Frieza with a pistol and stuff <laughs> over yeah, here yeah, from yeah, the like, Legos? My Lego Frieza with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like... At least at least this one comes with his uh, little like katana. And and fucking Corin has his little stick. Now uh, these these are the slightly newer Holy ones. These shit. are the ones that are yeah. more articulated. Yeah, on the I was back, gonna say so. this Go Tanks up here looks like fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, so those aren't the super old ones that typically came with weapons. They're you the know, ones it, that they it, started bringing Dragon Balls and the little, typically like the little tin like plate thing. Look at oh, that yeah. thing. Fact of the matter is, the toys back in the day, like okay. I can say a lot of things about my childhood. I can definitely say that the toys today are way cooler looking than the ones back they then. They figured out how to make on-model yeah. action figures yeah. <laughs> yeah. after they, we were yeah, they've done beyond the age. <laughs> so thank you very much uh, for this. Um, I'm going to put them somewhere in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Or on your desk, something, I don't know. My desk is uh, in the show. But this, this, and no offense to anything else that was sent in, but this is probably one of the coolest things that, like, it's a we got. It's a handmade. It's awesome. It can't be it's, it's, cool. it's handmade, it's amazing, it lights up, Ooh, it's like electric for them. This is from Mike Miller, or at Milla Ninja on Twitter. Oh, shit. Mm, that's amazing. No, I love this. This is something that we're going to hang up, like, somewhere prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the office, like somewhere that we'll see it every time we come in. This is amazing, an amazing office warming gift. Thank you so much, Mike Miller. I I don't I honestly don't know what to say. Like so much effort looks like it went into this. Yeah, yeah. no, this is easily one of the coolest things that we've ever gotten. Uh, the really interesting thing is, it's actually the, we don't use this logo anywhere but our website. Yeah, yeah. So like that's super cool. The fact that he made our website logo. Man. And yeah. the fact that he knows the actual company name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think he said he contacted you or something to get yeah, Oh, that, yeah, might, that actually, might be it. Yeah. All right. He did. But either way, like, this is really cool. Thank you so much. And thank you all for sending in so many awesome things. We will see you guys next time on TFS Fan Mail Friday. Someone also said this, it was anonymous from Amazon. Woo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs>